Hello, friends and listeners. We are proud to present today's guest, Ms. Nikki Hendricks. She has earned a bachelor's from Texas Tech University and has a master's in library and information science from the University of Texas at Austin. Ms. Hendricks started her career as an educator, spending 20 years in elementary, middle, and high schools. From there, she moved into the world of computer science and has recently earned a bachelor's degree in cybersecurity and information assurance at Western Governors University. She taught the first ever cybersecurity class at Lake Travis High School this past year with students working towards the CompTIA Security Plus certification, learning about cyber defense, and participating in CTFs. She has also coached numerous teams in the AFA Cyber Patriots competition and Girls Go Cyber Start competition. She joined TACC and EPIC as a cybersecurity education specialist in June of 2020 and will be writing cybersecurity curriculum for Texas public school students and helping set up the first Texas cyber range to provide virtual lab and cybersecurity lessons for students across Texas. Ms. Hendricks. Welcome. We are so excited to have you on our show. Let's talk computer science. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited about this. So tell us more about your work and how did you get to where you are today from an educator to a cybersecurity expert and a cybersecurity educator? Well, it's been a long and windy road. And I think um, many teachers who are teaching cybersecurity have gone through this because um, teachers are starting cybersecurity in the high schools, but they're not coming from a cybersecurity background. So I started off as an elementary teacher with a specialization in math, and then eventually uh, became certified to teach uh, to become a librarian. And went back after spending a year as a school librarian, I went back to get my master's degree in library and information science and did that for 20 years. Um, And then one day my son's computer science teacher called me from the high school because I was a middle school librarian and asked me if I would be interested in becoming a computer science teacher and um, getting certified to teach computer science. I mean, my experience in computer science was actually just managing the school website. That's all I did. Um, I did do some uh, after school activities with students. I hosted a Minecraft club and brought in someone to teach uh, web design. But um, I had never taken a computer science class. I I say that I took some way back in the 80s. Um, but nothing, uh, recently. And I, when she called me, I was like, no, I'm too old to change careers. And, uh, then, so instead she sent me some, um, flyers on a two day workshop over spring break at the university of Texas that was being run by Epic, which is who I work for now. And it was, um, to get teachers prepared for certification in computer science. And it was free. And I thought, well, I think I'll go and see if I like it. And after the first day, my brain was so full and there was so much information that I had been given that day, but I was so excited. And I thought, okay, if I'm this excited and I want to go back the second day, maybe there's something in this. And so that was in March and I studied, I, um, got to know the people who were running these certification courses. They were doing an online uh, beta course and they let me be a beta tester so I could study some more. And I was certified by July. The uh, high school had already hired me pending my certification. And I moved from being a middle school librarian to teaching computer science up at the high school. That's so awesome. That's such a cool story. And such a super role model. Oh, thank you. Uh, so it was fun. I mean, and then 
the the cybersecurity that I didn't know anything about cybersecurity. So that wasn't even part of my vocab at the time, except for one tiny little bit of information that introduced just a sliver of interest. And that was just before I started my first, teaching my first class of computer science. I had a friend of mine call me because her son was in computer science and he had just done a cyber patriot camp. And she wanted me to be a coach for cyber patriots up at the high school and for her son to have a team. And I, I said, I can't, you know, I turned it down, completely turned her down. And I said, I'm sorry, but I've got to learn how to teach computer science before I can add anything else to my plate, but it was there. And AP Computer Science Principles introduces a little bit of cybersecurity. So I got a little bit more interested in there, understanding what cybersecurity was. And that next school year, I started a Cyber Patriots team. I started off with three teams um, and the kids knew way more than I did. I, I didn't even know how to unzip a file. I did not know how to check a hash, you know, to make sure that the files were downloaded correctly. I didn't even know what a VM was at that point. And my high schoolers taught that to me. And they were fine that I didn't know. They, they taught me. They taught other students in the class. They were just excited that I was letting them have a team. Yeah. And one thing I learned through all of this when I started teaching computer science in high school and cybersecurity in high school was that I had to be okay with the students knowing more than me. Yeah, that is very important. And that's very important for a person like to openly acknowledge, right, to, so that all the other teachers can be calm. Mm -hmm. and, adopt. and that's what I, I, that's what I tell teachers. I said, you're going to have kids that know more than you in cybersecurity. They're going to, you're going to have teachers, uh, kids, sorry, that kids that know more than you, you're going to have kids that don't know anything. But those kids that know more than you, if you get stuck on something, ask those kids to teach the class. They love it. Um, right. and, so that's what, and so that's what we did the first year. I was just teaching computer science. And then the kids were like, we need to have a cybersecurity class. And Texas had come out with Innovative TEKS, which is our Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills. It was not an official class yet, but it was innovative. And I thought, well, if I have a cybersecurity class, I need to know a little bit more about it. So I put it off for a year, but I did propose it. And the school board was like, yes, we want this. And then I thought, I need to know what I'm teaching. I need to know a little bit more. And that's when I started looking for schools to work on my degree, to learn a little bit more about cybersecurity. And that first semester in October, I have my cybersecurity class and I'm taking the security plus exam, which is all the kids were preparing for. Um, and I had not taken it yet. And I walked into class the day after they knew I'd been studying for it. And it was like, they met me at the door. Did you pass? Did you pass? Thank goodness I passed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Such a cute story. Take like a movie. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, can you please talk to me about the different things that are happening currently in the K-12 cybersecurity education? Are there any major changes, trends? Well, um, you know, I work for Epic now, which is out of the University of Texas at Austin, and it's called Expanding Pathways in Computing. They started off um, working to get more teachers certified in computer science so that we could expand the computer science programs in the high schools in Texas. Um, they actually now work with many states getting teachers certified. But they brought me on to start getting teachers trained to teach cybersecurity. It was now an official uh, class in Texas, but people don't have the background in it. So that's what I was brought on to do. And we have partnered with cyber.org, which is out of Louisiana. They provide cybersecurity labs and curriculums for free to people. And through them, um, I applied and was accepted onto their committee that they started um, in the past, this past fall. 
It was a committee to develop K through 12 cybersecurity standards so that when we these get published, hopefully they're going to be published in August, they're going to be national standards that states can look at to start integrating cybersecurity as young as um, kindergarten. And, and, you know, kindergarten kids are learning about um, protecting their, you know, their um, iPads and using passwords and not sharing passwords, um, you know, so we have created a curriculum that slowly introduces different concepts so that by middle school, they're ready to start really digging into cybersecurity. And then by high school, they're, they'll be way more advanced when they get there. So that's one of the trends that's going on um, because people are realizing the importance of it. And this committee had educators and industry specialists from all over the United States. For, um, they had someone from every state except for Hawaii that was um, a part of this committee. We had educators, wow. elementary educators, milita- uh, middle school educators, and high school educators all participating in the development of this. And then also Texas had a Senate bill uh, passed that was requiring the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board and the um, Texas Education Agency to create a secondary post-secondary cybersecurity pathway. And so that work group is continuing right now and they hope to be finished in July and then pass out this uh, pathway where community colleges can work, um, provide dual credit courses with high school for high school students to work towards an associate's degree in cybersecurity as they are in high school. So there's a lot of things going on right now. California has a big push in cybersecurity and they're working on developing um, apprenticeships for their high school uh, students in cybersecurity. Virginia has a big push um, in cybersecurity and they, you know, they're lucky that they've got a lot of the government resources over there to help them with their push. So all around states are picking up cybersecurity and making it a part of high school um, right now. And some are actually have moved it on into middle school. So with so much change, which we need, like when you talked about the K-12 standards and standards for kindergarten, that makes totally sense, right? First, it prepares them. And the second thing is like, I mean, for attackers to attack a family, the easiest is going through iPads the kindergartners are using. And if they know, they need to know this. So it is a required thing for kindergartners, right? So with, I mean, it almost feels like it's, not a slow transition. It's not like we are teaching cybersecurity already and we have increasing. It feels like almost a sudden realization that we have that we have to teach cybersecurity in K-12. So how do you think, what are the different paths now? Like suddenly if, if it rolls everywhere, different paths of how a teacher can teach cybersecurity in the state of Texas and other states how do they get certifications and how will, how can they be prepared? Well, unfortunately, there's not a certification pathway for teachers to teach cybersecurity. They just have to have an interest in it. Um, but saying that, there's also a lot of curriculums. And I think the Rex Academy curriculum is one of those curriculums that help lead the teachers through the cybersecurity. So a lot of the teachers are going to be learning it with their students um, because there's not... A lot of training out there yet. Uh, we do professional development at Epic. In fact, we have a couple of um, workshops coming up in July for beginning uh, cybersecurity teachers to learn the fundamentals. And um, I also do cybersecurity 101 webinars once a month, uh, just teaching the basics so that teachers can come on, ask questions, get the basics so that they feel a little bit more comfortable going back to their classroom to teach it. Um, There are resources being developed. Um, Cyber.org has a great one. Y'all's curriculum is is great. Um, I'm trying to think. There's there's a lot of curriculums being developed. It's just um, the cost 
is what's holding some schools back. Um, and the teachers having to feel confident in approaching a subject that they're not used to teaching. They've never taught, even computer science teachers have not taught cybersecurity. They don't have a lot of not, uh, background in cybersecurity. But once you get into it and start looking at the resources, you know, it's, it's really the stuff that's being developed is helping lead teachers to teach it in the classroom. And there's more and more professional development opportunities and conferences coming out. In fact, the big national conference for um, education, cybersecurity education is the NICE K-12 conference. And that comes is in December. Um, and that's one of the things that I went to when I started um, wanting to learn more, I went to one of those conferences and they have different tracks. And there's also gen cyber camps that they have uh, teacher camps that teachers can go to, to get information, to learn about cybersecurity. And I did one of those in 2017. And, you know, so it's just as we've, you, you just have to look for them, but they're out there. And really now's a good time to participate because um, so many of them are doing them virtually. So you don't even have to go to the actual camp. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Like, I mean, I have an undergrad and master's in computer science and I worked in computer science. Like I developed so many applications. Still, like if you asked me to teach cybersecurity, no, I, <laughs> I would be scared. That, but like, as you said, like there, if, if there is like ex academy curriculum, I have taught my kids using our curriculum, though I pretty much learned along with them. Mm -hmm. So it is possible. It is possible. And it when is I possible, it, but yeah. When I taught it, sometimes I was only a day ahead of my students. Right. You know? yeah. So mm -hmm. I was, it was, I was self teaching as I went along. And, um, and when I, like I said, when I didn't understand something, a lot of times I just asked my students. Mm -hmm. And they helped me, you know, move me along and I helped move them along. And so it was actually, I honestly think my high school kids enjoyed it because we were learning together. Collaborative. Yep. Yeah. And I they knew that. And so they were prepared. They didn't hold it against me. They enjoyed that process. Yep. Yeah. And, and computer science in general, right? Like if the program works the first time, we didn't learn much. Unless something we did wrong, that's when we start debugging and that's when we really learn. Mm -hmm. So it's a, like learning computer science is all through problem solving. If it is, otherwise there's no way you can learn computer science. So it, the collaborative well, I, effort it definitely yeah. highlights and that I, part. And I think kids, especially your um, AP kiddos, you know, your advanced kiddos, they need that course that they don't just fly through. They need the course that they make a mistake and it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to debug, we have to figure it out, you know, because it's such a shock to their system because they've always flown through classes and they hit computer science and cybersecurity and they're like, oh, wait a minute. I actually have to ask somebody for help. And I think it's good for them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what advice would you give to teachers and schools on how to increase their cybersecurity classes and how to, gen in general, like high school, middle school? Um, I think, first off, offer the competitions. Um, Cyber Patriots is a really good defensive competition. And that brought in kids who didn't have their group of people, Right they were in high school without their, their people that they hung around with. And then they found cyber Patriots and realized, Oh my gosh, I found my people. They speak the same language as me. And this brought kids into the program. Also cyber start America, which is a capture the flag competition. And that's the offensive side that brought in more kids. Um, and actually some kids like the defense better than the offense. And sometimes it's the other way around. Um, what we also did to bring kids into computer science and cybersecurity is we posted, we did like a, um, instead of humans of New York, we did a students of computer science 
bulletin boards all around the school. We had pictures of students that the, the students created these that were in our classes. It, sh it showed, you know, were they cheerleaders or football players or swimmers or in the band or in theater or just like to read or musicians, whatever they liked. It had their interests on there. It had their picture. They talked about why they like computer science and cybersecurity. And we probably put four or five of these big, huge bulletin boards around the school. And our program just flourished because they realized that the computer science was and cybersecurity was for everybody. The other things we did too, is we tried to, for lack of a better word, de-geek our classroom. <laughs> we, we tried to make it more um, female friendly in the fact that we, we set our classrooms to look more like a co coffee shop. And we had rubber ducks out there and we had this pinwheel contraption. So instead of raising their hand, they raised this pinwheel that was on the side of their monitors. Um, we had the little robots around. We tried to make it look like a fun classroom when they walked in and the, the tables were all grouped in fours. So they knew, you know, we knew they were going to collaborate. They, that was a big thing in our classes. They had to collaborate. We had high tables and low tables. Um, so we made it a, a friendly classroom. And then, um, we also did things like with the Cyber Patriots, if you have an all girls team, it's a free, it's free for the competition. You don't pay that. So we pushed things like that. Uh, we started a women in cybersecurity high school chapter to bring the females in so they felt comfortable. So these are all the different things we did for to get the students into the program. And when I started there, it was just the two teachers to um, teaching computer science. This and cybersecurity. This past year, they have four teachers teaching um, because the oh, program wow. has grown so much. And I, I mean, I probably had each year that I was there for computer science principles, which was our beginner class, um, 180 students. Oh, wow. That's that a really good number. Yes. So, um, so it really, they, it was, and you have to be, I think as a teacher, you have to be okay with a talkative classroom, as long as they're staying on task, you have to be okay with students helping each other. Um, because once they learn that they can work together, they seem to, to just really progress and enjoy the subjects. Um, and then as a teacher, like I said, you have to enjoy it with the students. You have to just, um, you just have to know that, and I, I, this is what I keep saying over and over again, because I've had so many teachers worried that they're not going to know enough. You have to be okay with the teachers, know, the students knowing more than you. You have to be okay with asking them for help. And, and, you know, once you've done this the first year and you've gotten through that first year, then second year is so much easier. Yep. Totally makes sense. Yep. So I'm going to ask you a question, which you have already touched on it. I feel just because of the importance of the question, I'm going to ask you again. So what kind of resources are out there to teach cybersecurity for K-12 students? Well, there's several online programs. Your Rex Academy, there's cyber.org, there's Code HS. Those are all online um, curriculums. And I think Project Lead the Way has a cybersecurity curriculum. There's a great book, a uh, textbook, if people want a textbook, that's called Principles of Cybersecurity. It's by Linda Lavender. Uh, she's actually out of Virginia. And I know the California schools and a lot of the Virginia schools use that text. There is on Facebook, a cybersecurity educators group. And teachers are very uh, good about sharing lesson plan ideas in, in that, um, giving resources. Um, if you have a question, they'll, they'll jump in and answer. And I've used a lot of that for my cybersecurity newsletter and anybody who wants to, um, join, you know, have access to my cybersecurity newsletter. If you can, you know, we can pass out my email address and they could ask to subscribe. And I send out, uh, events and resources, um, every couple of weeks that are through that newsletter. Also in Texas, we have partnered with Cyber Texas Foundation out of San Antonio, and they have a website and we are creating a resource hub for um, Texas educators. So as we get this moving along, we're going to have curriculum links, we're going to have 
website links. We're going to have simulation links and competition information. We're going to, we're going to have it all here on this uh, website and uh, help with cyber patriots training for coaches and cyber patriots training for students so that um, there's one place that they can go to, to get all this information. We need a cyber national cybersecurity educator association. Um, you know, we have the computer science teachers association. We need something similar for cybersecurity educators that hasn't been developed yet that I know about, not a national one, but I think at some point we need, we need that. Yep. Yes. That will be really helpful. Like the CSTA, I, I really like this, the newsletters and I'm sure it's like your newsletters where they give a lot of resources out and the meetings because like computer science experts, probably cybersecurity teachers are even more rare and they need to talk to other people to collaborate. Right. So I right. Think, yeah, I think this is really needed. Yep. So I think I have another question. Um, I mean, though cybersecurity education is going to be really big in the coming years, but we are still in the infancy stage, right? So if we have to develop an ideal solution for computers for, to teach cybersecurity in K-12 space, what kind of solution it should be? I think introducing the students at a younger age um, is great. I don't know if I know the ideal solution right now. I do, I do know the things that we are weak on. Um, and one of the biggest things we need for high school students is either work study programs or apprenticeships or um, internships for high school. And CTE teachers, cybersecurity teachers don't know who to approach to get these in place. And so we need industry, more partnership with industry for cybersecurity because the teachers need a mentor just as much as the students need a mentor. And I think that would help a lot because the teachers can teach the academic, but they may not always have the technical knowledge. And having a, an industry mentor to help with the technology part would um, boost a teacher's confidence and boost the skills of students. So I think that's a big thing that needs to be addressed. Um, I think, and I think we need to get it in more states. There's still a lot of states that don't offer cybersecurity, um, but it's, it's coming, it's coming. And what helps is the um, Perkins funding. Um, it, many states, the cybersecurity is part of the CTE, the career and technical education. So they get access to Perkins funding to help with curriculum, to help with certifications and all of that. And also allowing high school students, helping high school students um, start with some of those industry certifications so that by the time they leave high school, they've got some beginning certifications to get started. And I think also we need to look at, the schools need to look at how they're promoting cybersecurity because, you know, cybersecurity, if you can get those certifications, you might be able to get entry-level jobs right. in, in technology. You don't have to always go to college. Yeah. Um, and then the community colleges have some great associate's degrees in cybersecurity or in network operations that can get those kids in at a, a cost that's not so expensive as college, you know, and it's in two years. So there, there's different pathways. And I think st students need to be made aware of the different pathways. There's not one set pathway to get into cybersecurity, which is really exciting because it meets the needs of a lot of different students. Because because not every student's going to be college bound, and um, but they're great with the hands on technical skills that you that are needed for cybersecurity. So um, I think that information needs to get passed out to teachers, to students, to our counselors. Um, I did a presentation just recently to Texas counselors, and so many of them 
were just amazed at how much there is to offer with cybersecurity that they don't know about because it's such a new and up and coming field. And so there's a lot. There's, I don't think there's an ideal solution yet. There's a lot. People are working on it, but it's still trial and error in so many states. But industry specialists have been working with states and education agencies and cybersecurity teachers. They are all working together to try to um, get cybersecurity off the ground and running for our K-12 kiddos. Yep. Yes. Uh, it really makes sense. Counselors and even parents, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. You've got to get across to parents that we're not teaching your kids how to hack, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they are learning some of those skills, but we- right. Defend, you have to learn. Yeah. Yes. You have to know what, how to hack to know how to defend against it. Mm -hmm. So we do a big unit throughout the year on ethical hacking. And- um, so you've got to show them the positives. Honestly, I think this pandemic year has probably helped promote cybersecurity with parents all over. Um, you know, it's probably been the best thing for cybersecurity. We can take a positive out of the pandemic. <laughs> right. Yeah, I totally agree. Yes. Yeah, this is the first year parents didn't complain to me that their kids are always on the computer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Can you give us, our listeners, your email address, please? Yes, my email is nhendricks, H-E-N-D-R-I-C-K-S, at T-A-C-C dot U-Texas dot E-D-U. So thank you so much for your time, Nikki. It was wonderful for me. It I really loved learning everything. I learned quite a bit, every word you have said. Thank you so much for doing what you're doing for the state of Texas and for the entire country. Well, thank you for having me. I, I'm passionate about this subject, so I always love to share. So thank you very much.